Hi, my name is Steve Fahrenholtz, and I've got a question. Have you ever been reading your Bible, and it may be a verse that you've gone over and over, and then all of a sudden it just jumps out at you? Well, this happened to me, and I want to tell you about a verse that stood out. Now, there's a lot of great verses in the Bible, and you can go to Hobby Lobby or Kirkland's, and you can find all kinds of the go-to verses people know and have memorized and hanging on their walls. I mean, we have some hanging in our house. But this one I don't think I've ever seen hanging up on a wall. And it's in the book of Mark chapter 9, and I'll just give you a little backstory. There's a crowd gathered, and they're arguing back and forth. And in that crowd is Jesus' disciples. There's some scribes and some Pharisees. And then there's the father of a demon-possessed boy who took his son to get healed by the disciples, but the disciples couldn't heal him. So Jesus walks up on the scene, and then this boy's father goes running out to Jesus. And Jesus asked him what was going on. He said, Lord, my son is mute and deaf and has a demon. And this demon is always trying to throw him in the fire or in the water to kill him. And he brought him to the disciples to get healed because the disciples were healing people and they couldn't do it. And so he looks at Jesus and he said, Lord, if you can, can you heal him? And then, and then Jesus says, uh, he says uh, in uh, Martin 9, 23, he said, uh, if you can, it's like all things are possible to him who believes. And you know, I, I got to thinking, and, and I can't really blame this father because, you know, here the disciples were going around doing stuff, healing people. He brought his son to the disciples and they couldn't heal him. So then here comes Jesus, who is the Lord, and he's the master of the disciples also. And so maybe in the back of his mind, he's thinking, well, they couldn't heal him, and they follow Jesus. Maybe he can't heal him? Well, this is the verse that jumped out at me, and it's, it's Mark 9, 24. And uh, after Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him he, who believes. And so the father looked at him and he cried out with tears in his eyes. He said, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. And that just kind of jumped out at me because it was two things. First, he was talking to Jesus and he said, Lord, I believe. But then right away, the son of God, he tells, help my unbelief. He tells him he believes and yet still he doesn't believe or he, he has unbelief. And I got to thinking, you know, that's, that's comforting because in this book, there are a lot of things I understand and there's so much I don't. And, you know, on the outside, I want it to appear like I've got it all together, like I understand everything. But on the inside, man, there's some, there's some tough things in here that I struggle with. And it's good to know that Jesus is looking at me and he said, it's okay, it's okay to believe and it's okay to have unbelief because the Holy Spirit is going to teach me the things that I'm having problems with. So I've got to take what I do understand and I've got to obey that. And then what I don't understand or I'm struggling with or I'm having doubts about, I know in time as I mature and grow, the Holy Spirit is going to give me that and, and you know, feed me. And then that way I can take what I learn and build upon that. But just because there's something I don't understand, I don't have to just, you know, tuck it away and hide it and act like I do understand it. It's okay. So then th something else flipped the script on me, you might say. I realized that I do believe everything in here from cover to cover, whether I understand it or not. But if I commit a sin, what I'm really telling uh, Jesus is I don't believe that sin is as serious as he takes it or he says it is. So this verse, the way it's speaking to me on this level, on this other level, is Lord, I believe what you're saying, 
let me take sin as serious as you take it. Let me believe, help my unbelief that sin is not serious. When, when I commit sin, help me, help me to understand that, that you had to die on a cross and was, was brutally murdered. And it, that's how serious sin is. So when I don't believe it's that serious, Lord, I'm just going to say, Lord, I believe. Just help my unbelief. 